Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are studying the Saudhnya Sutras in the Ashtadhyayi, the core of Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we shall focus on Karaka and Vibhakti. We have already studied the technical terms Vakya, Pada and we have also studied the principle of compositionality. Previously we have also studied the concepts of Arthakasha and Shabdakasha and also the process of speech production. Related to that, here are two important concepts important technical terms used in the Paninian grammar, Karaka and Vibhakti. So far we have studied the technical terms namely Vakya, the sentence, Pada, the words and we also noted down the features of the Pada as well as the Vakya. We have also studied the concept of compositionality which plays an important role as far as the Paninian grammatical system is concerned. We also studied the process of speech production in relation to which the concepts of Arthakasha and Shabdakasha were also studied. So now the most important concepts of Karaka and Vibhakti which are related to the technical terms that we have studied so far, they will become subject of our study in this particular lecture and so on. So let us take a recap and try to understand what does this grammar derive. The answer to this question is that this grammar derives sentence or sentences, groups of sentence and these sentences are of different structures, varied structures. This is what this grammar derives. What is this grammar composed of? And the answer to this question is that this grammar is composed of lists also known as lexicon and a set of rules. What do the lists consist of? The lists are of two types. One is a list of roots and the other one is the list of affixes. The list of roots is also of two types, dhatu and pratipadika. The list of verbal roots consists of approximately 2000 elements defined as dhatu and we have seen how dhatu is defined. We studied in the previous lectures, we studied that dhatu is defined in two ways by bhuva dayo dhatavaha, the underived dhatus are defined which are part of these 2000 elements and then there is also a definition which defines derived dhatus by Sanadyanta Dhatavaha. We also have nominal roots also termed as Pratipadika and we have studied this technical term as well. Dhatu and Pratipadika constitute the list of roots. The list of Pratipadika is innumerable although there are some ganas which are mentioned in the text of Ashtadhyayi which can still be counted. <clears throat> the list of pratyayas, affixes is very much a limited list. 
However, these two types of lists, list of roots also known as prakriti and list of affixes also known as pratyaya, they are part of this grammar primarily. And then there are rules, approximately 4000 rules. We have already studied some of them. We already saw the first 14 sutras which are part of this list of 4000 rules. These approximately 4000 rules are divided into 8 chapters. Each chapter is further divided into 4 sub chapters. So we have 32 sections in all. The longest being 6.1 with 223 sutras and the shortest being 2.2 with only 38 sutras. What do these rules do? The rules apply in two layers, sequentially as well as simultaneously. The sequential application of rules takes list of roots and affixes as input and produces the bigger unit namely the word or technically called as pada as output. Then it takes padas as input, padas or words as input and produces or generates sentence as output. This is the sequential application of rules. In two steps, in the first step the input is the list of roots and output is the pada. In the second step this output called pada becomes the input and the output is the sentence. This is how the sentence gets derived in Paninian grammar. The second simultaneous or embedded way of application of rules is the following. It takes input as the words or padas and derives or generates the sentence, but these words and padas they get embedded by the lists of roots and affixes which generate the output in the form of the bigger, bigger unit called word or technically called pada. So that is the reason why in this simultaneous or embedded way of application of rules, the inputs are shown as 1 and 1.1, whereas in the sequential application they are shown as 1 and 2 as far as numbers are concerned. This is how the rules get applied in the Paninian grammar. So let us take this situation. This is a picture taken from the web and the question is how does a speaker describe what is depicted in this picture? One can answer this question by saying that a speaker wants to describe the action of going that is visible in this particular picture. Also the speaker notices that there are female students who are part of this action of going described in this particular picture. The speaker may also notice about school that these female students are part of and the action of going that the speaker wants to describe. So now we have these three elements with us, linguistic elements, the action of going, female students and also the school that is related to this picture. And when one wants to describe this picture, it, it can be described in these three elements. Using the lexicon of Sanskrit, now the speaker decides chatra as the item which describes the meaning namely the female student, Pathashala is an item which describes a school, Gama is an item in this lexicon which denotes the meaning namely to go. We also decide that the students are the performers of the action of going 
as visible in this particular picture. We also decide that the school is the place where the students are going. It is very important to decide these facts. Now, when we decide that the students are the performers of the action of going, we select from the list of affixes us by 412 and we attach it to female performers. Then when we decide that the school is the place where the students are going, we select um, which answers the question where does the performer go? And um is the word which helps connect the answer to this question. This is in accordance with 412 once again. We also have anti which indicates the performer of the action as per the rules 3478 and 713. After having collected this information, we bring all these elements together and so we say chhatra plus us, we form one bracket, one word, one pada, patashala plus am is another pada, gamma plus anti is the third pada. When all these padas are brought together, so we have chhatra plus us plus Pathashala plus am plus gamma plus anti and the respective sutras come into play when we select the affixes namely when we select us 1453, 231 and 2346 they come into play. When we select am to be added after Pathashala 1449, 231 and 232 they come into play. And so when we join these elements together, as we have shown with the red plus signs, this is what constitutes a sentence which we have studied before. So when we join these elements together and do the further processing by application of the rule 61101, 61107, 3168 and 7378, we get a sentence of this kind, chatraha pathashalam gachanti. This is the sentence that we get. Now, if we replace the left hand side elements with balaka meaning a boy, pustaka meaning a book and patha meaning to read, we will fill the structure by these substituted left hand side elements, the structure of this kind where the right hand side element is occupied by us, um and anti respectively over here, us, um and anti. And now we have to fill in these left hand side elements, the prakriti elements by balaka, ustaka and patha. When we do fill these elements, then we get a sentence like balakaha ustakam pathanti, balakaha ustakam pathanti boys read the book. Similarly, we can generate n number of such sentences with the same structures. Similarly, we can generate n number of sentences with different structures by replacing the right hand side elements as well. So, similar structure sentences can be obtained by replacing the left hand side elements and keeping the right hand side elements as was shown earlier, but when we replace the right hand side elements as well, then we can get sentences with different structures. And for doing this, we will take help of the rules stated in the Paninian grammar. In accordance with the rules stated in the Paninian grammar, such sentences can be generated. This process of speech production is repeated over here for the primary purpose of highlighting the fact that this cognitive process remains same 
remains as the backbone of the entire process of derivation as far as the shabda level, word level is concerned and also the swara level or the accent level is concerned. More explanation can be provided with regard to this process when we take the similar example and derive the shabda from the same kind of artha but arranged differently to generate the passive voice forms. What is important here in the discussion on Karaka and Vibhakti is that what exactly did we do here? We as speakers decided first of all about the action we want to describe. Then we decided firstly who all are the participants in this action. Then we decided what roles these different elements play in the description of this action. After that, we selected the words which express the action as well as the entities that participate in this action and then we selected the words which express the roles these entities play in the accomplishment of this action. So, when we decided who all are the participants in this action and what roles these different elements play in the description of the action and before that we decided the action we want to describe, we eventually collected the meanings which are part of the Arthakasha. Then when we moved forward and we selected the words which expressed the action as well as the entities that participate in that action and also the words which express the roles these entities play in the accomplishment of an action. We are still part of Arthakasha, but this is related to the Shabdakasha. The Shabdakasha that is related to the Arthakasha is what gets selected. And then the process of speech production begins and those words which the sounds which express this Shabdakasha which is linked with this Arthakasha, this gets expressed. This is what we did. Now it is important to note that the words that are selected which express the action as well as the entities that participate in that action, these words are part of the lexicon of prakritis, roots. And when we selected the words which express the roles that these entities play in the accomplishment of an action, these elements are part of the lexicon of pratyayas. So, action and the entities participating in the action are selected from the lexicon of entities, lexicon of prakritis. These get expressed by the dhatu and pratipadika types of prakritis. They are much bigger sets of elements, theoretically infinite, which we have studied when we studied the definitions of dhatu and pratipadika as given in the text of Ashtadhyayi. The roles, however, are smaller in number. The roles these entities play in the accomplishment of an action, they are smaller in number. They are six as per the sutras of Panini given in the Ashtadhyayi. These roles also show the interrelation between the elements and the action. And now we come to the main point, namely that these roles are called karakas. The roles that these entities play, the roles that pratipadikas play in the accomplishment of an action denoted by a verbal root dhatu, these roles are called karakas. And the words which express these roles, they are called vibhaktis. So these karakas get expressed by the vibhakti. This is the interrelation between the karaka and the vibhakti. To highlight some important facts 
we can say that these roles that the entities play in the accomplishment of a particular action denoted by the verbal root are called karakas. And these karakas are expressed by the vibhakti. This is very important to remember. The roles are called karaka and the roles are expressed by the vibhakti. What is most important is the distinction between karaka and vibhakti. The roles which are called karaka are of the nature of meaning and the vibhakti that express the karaka are the explicit words which become audible. Karakas are part of arthakasha, vibhaktis are part of shabdakasha and vibhaktis are also audible. The audible words are called vibhakti which are directly linked with the elements in the shabdakasha. Once again, karakas are only six. We shall study what these six karakas are. But the most important point to remember over here is that the karakas are only six. Vibhaktis are 18, 18 things, things suffixes stated in 3, 4, 78 and 21 sups, sup suffixes which are stated in 4, 1, 2. These are all vibhaktis. These are actual words which are audible, which are part of the shabdakasha. And karakas are only six part of the arthakasha. One more important point to be stressed here is that, yes, along with the 21 suffixes, the 18 tinsa, ting suffixes are also termed vibhaktis. This is extremely important. Along with the sup, the things are also termed vibhaktis. This is highlighted because only the sups are popularly known as vibhaktis. As far as the technicality of the Paninian grammar is concerned, things are also termed vibhaktis. By the sutra, vibhaktischa 14104, which means tingaha supascha vibhakti saudhnya bhavanti, ting suffixes and sub suffixes, both of them are termed vibhakti, an extremely important feature. This fact is highlighted because there is a lot of confusion that exists in the curricula that we have seen existent. Whenever a question is asked, how many karakas exist, people tend to answer by saying eight or seven, there are seven karakas, which is technically wrong. Because when a person refers to the number seven, what one refers to is the vibhakti. There are seven vibhaktis. And if some bodhana is considered as an additional vibhakti, which Panini does not do, but still for the sake of convenience, if we accept for the time being that some bodhana is also the eighth vibhakti, then we are referring to the actual words which express the karakas. So, seven and eight, these numbers are associated with the vibhaktis, with the words that are actually spoken by people, which are part of the shabdakasha. And karaka is part of the arthakasha. This distinction must be absolutely clear. One should never answer the question, how many karakas are there by saying seven or eight, never. The number of karakas stated in the grammar of Panini is always six. There cannot be any other answer to this question. How many karakas exist? Six. How many vibhaktis exist? 7 in Paninian grammar. And if, as far as the modern grammarians are concerned, 8. What is 8? A number referring to vibhaktis, always. What is 7 referring to? Vibhaktis. What does 6 refer to? Karakas. 6 can never refer to vibhaktis 
seven can never refer to karakas. There are no seven karakas. There are no six vibhaktis per se. There are six karakas and seven vibhaktis expressing those karakas. This distinction of terminology must be absolutely clear to the students. That is why they are stressed. That is why this much time is spent on stressing this distinction. Here is a list of sups. We already studied them when we looked at the concept of vibhakti, when we discussed the markers, when we studied the sutras which delineate the definition of an it or a marker. If you remember, we studied the sutra na vibhaktau tasmaha, where we studied the concept of vibhakti, in which these are the sups that we studied. The consonants at the end are marked in red precisely to highlight the fact that s and m coming at the end of these terms sup are not considered as it because these are vibhaktis and the sutra na vibhaktau tasmaha negates these sounds to be termed it. However, p which comes in sup 7.3, this is termed as it primarily because this is not negated by the sutra na vibhaktau tasmaha. And these sup suffixes will generate these forms. And these forms are the following. They are displayed in the form of a table on this slide. They are Ramaha, Ramau, Ramaha, Prathama, Ramam, Ramau, Raman, Dvitiya, Ramena, Ramabhyam, Ramaihi, Tritiya, Ramaya, Ramabhyam, Ramebhya, Chaturthi, Ramat, Ramabhyam, Ramebhya, Panchami, Ramasya, Ramayoho, Ramanam, Shashthi, Rame, Ramayoho, Rameshu, Saptami. These forms are called Subanta forms, the Padas, they are eligible to be used in the sentence. These sub suffixes, they express the Karakas. For example, in this two one, we have Am, which expresses the Karma Karaka. Ena expresses the Karana Karaka or Kartra Karaka and so on and so forth. So these are the actual words which express the Karakas. Karakas are the meanings. These are the Subantas, 21 Subanta forms. These are the Vibhaktyanta forms. Similarly, here are the 18 things. They are also the Vibhaktis. And S and M, at the end of these, they do not become it because their it term is negated by the sutra na vibhaktau tasmaha. So these 18 suffixes are called vibhakti and that is why na vibhaktau tasmaha applies and negates the it saudhnya to sa and ma shown in the red color. Pa however and ng however can become it because na vibhaktau tasmaha does not negate the it saudhnya of these two letters pa and ng. So these 18, they are called vibhaktis and they become padas fit to be used in the sentence. Here are the tinganta forms at the end of which ting suffixes occur. Nayati, nayataha, nayanti, nayasi, nayataha, nayatha and nayami, nayavaha, nayamaha. On the one hand and nayate, nayate, nayante, nayase, nayate, nayadve, Naye nayavahe nayamahe on the other. These are the tingantas. They have vibhaktis at the end and they express karakas. For example, nayati nayataha, these nine forms, they always express kartru karaka, these vibhaktis. Nayate nayate, etc., they express kartru karaka, but these te, etc., they can also express karma and bhava. But we shall study this little later. 
right now suffice it to say that these are the tinganta forms having vibhakti at the end so these vibhaktis they express karakas and karakas are the meanings they get expressed by these vibhaktis to summarize what we have said so far and what we studied so far we can say that karaka and vibhakti are the fundamental concepts in the paninian grammar the fundamental technical terms and they need to be clearly understood karaka is part of the meaning vibhakti is a term used for words which express the karaka and we have seen the distinction together these two concepts cover the sentence structure in sanskrit it is through these concepts that the description of the world through words happens extremely important fact as far as the linguistic usage is concerned now we shall look at this concept of karaka and also the definitions of six karakas in detail in the coming lectures i thank you for your patience